Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, thanks for checking me out. All right, so casserole lovers, check in here. This is definitely a must have. So if you'd like to see how this comes together, stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna get started on the stove today. So I have a few tablespoons of canola oil and I'm adding to that about a tablespoon of butter. And we are going to start by sauteing some onions and garlic. So let's start with the onions. We wanna give the onions a chance to kind of soften up before we add the garlic. The garlic is mainly just gonna be for flavor, um, but the onions, we do wanna let them get a little bit soft before we introduce the garlic. So to the onions, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, and we're gonna let that saute and soften up for a bit. I let the onions hang out for probably a good five minutes before I introduce the garlic. Again, you want the onions to be nice and soft. So now we are adding our minced garlic to it. Of course, you could go ahead and add fresh garlic, um, but I just find it easier and just as good to add minced garlic, but you do what you wanna do. So we've added the garlic in there and we're gonna let that cook only for about a minute or two. If you've ever sauteed garlic and onion together, you already know what it smells like in here. Delicious. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our meat. So I am using ground turkey. Of course you can use, you know, whatever kind of meat you like. Uh, ground beef, ground sirloin. Um, if you wanted to do pork, I guess you could do pork. Um, you could also do ground beef and add something like Italian sausage. You can add like hot or sweet you know, depending on your flavor palette. So cooking is all about what you like and what you wanna do. You don't always have to stick to a strict recipe. Um, that's why, I don't know, I guess my videos are kind of loose with the actual like ingredients and recipes because I think that cooking should be all about what you like. I guess that's why I'm not really a baker because you have to stick to like a strict recipe when you bake. But with savory cooking, you can pretty much do what you want. So I went ahead and seasoned the meat, salt, pepper, garlic powder. I added some saison um, and we're just going to let that cook down and do its thing. Once your meat is cooked through, meaning it doesn't have any pink spots left, that would be a good time to check it for seasoning. You know, just take a little piece, see how it tastes to you. You can always add. Um, and then you just wanna continue to break it up. One thing I like about the ground turkey is you don't have to drain the meat because there's not like a whole lot of fat in it. So, yeah. Okay guys, let's get started on this sauce. So, I'm adding a few cans of just strictly tomato sauce. You can do Prego, Ragu, whatever kind of uh, spaghetti sauce that you would like, or you can just do um, tomato sauce like I'm doing and add the seasonings and everything yourself. I'm adding quite a bit of tomato sauce only because I do have a vegetarian in the house, so I'm making like a separate pan of this without meat. So I'm adding a little bit more um, sauce than you probably would. So you would probably use two cans of um, the tomato sauce that I use, which I think is like 28 ounces, um, but I use three. So we're gonna go ahead and get the sauce seasoned up, whatever your favorites are. Mine are salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, a little MSG, never hurt nobody. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and get that mixed up. Thank you. 
Now let's add a few other things to our sauce. I'm going to add some Italian seasoning, which is just an Italian seasoning blend of like rosemary, uh, basil. What else do you have? Cilantro, maybe. I don't know. Look at the back of your Italian seasoning and it'll tell you all what's in there. But we're going to add Italian seasoning. We're going to add basil flakes. And we're also going to add some basil paste. That gives it a nice flavor also. So we're going to add that in and get that all mixed up. Mm -hmm. So we're adding more of the Italian seasoning because I like to see it in the sauce. And wait, what is that? Do it! Just do it! OMG, did she just put sugar in the sauce? <laughs> so y'all, let's settle this. You do need to have sugar in your spaghetti sauce. So I got to give credit where credit is due. My husband taught me that sugar does absolutely go in spaghetti sauce. So my whole thing was like, I don't want a sweet spaghetti sauce. Like, no. But the sugar just cuts the acidity. If you don't add sugar, it's going to be like really like tart and that does not taste good. So you do need to add some sugar to your spaghetti sauce, to your tomato sauce. Taste it as you go and I promise you, you will see the difference. So now that we have our meat mixed in with the sauce, which is going to give it additional flavor, let's get started on the filling, on the stuffing for the stuffed shells. So here we have some ricotta cheese and some mozzarella cheese. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and add the whole bag. So we're going to add the mozzarella cheese to the ricotta. We're also going to add one egg, and then we're just going to season that with a little bit of salt and pepper and some fresh parsley. What I will say about this dish is it's basically like a deconstructed lasagna. So the same recipe that I'm using for this is the same way that I would make lasagna. You know, you're going to have your brown meat, you're going to have your sauce, and you're going to have your ricotta filling. So like I said, it's basically the same recipe. So if you want to make a good lasagna, this would be a good video to use for that as well. So once we have all our ingredients in, we're going to just go ahead and, of course, get that mixed up. All right, now time for the fun part. So I just have some um, jumbo shells and you're just gonna cook those according to the package directions. And once they are cooled off, you are going to start using your ricotta filling to fill the shells. Now you can put as much filling as you like in. If you like a lot of ricotta cheese, put a lot, like I like a lot. If you don't really like it, I mean, you gotta like it to make this dish, but if you don't want like a whole, whole lot of it, then, you know, just put a little bit. But I use like a big heaping teaspoon and stuff the shell. Now that I have my shells stuffed, I'm going to add some sauce. And I wasn't thinking. I should have put a little bit of sauce on the bottom before I put the shells in, but I was doing too much. So we're just going to try and get some of the sauce like in the nooks and crannies in between so that we can get some on the bottom. And I mean, after it came out, it was fine. And like it wasn't like dry at the bottom. So if you forget like I did, just do what I'm doing and just try and get it like in the nooks and crannies. And right there, that's enough sauce if you like it like that. 
But I like mine kind of a little bit more saucy. Like, I don't like it to be, like, dry. So I'm going to be adding some more sauce to mine. And then also I would like to mention, I had quite a bit of sauce left over after I was all done. So you can always freeze that and then now you got sauce the next time you make spaghetti or whatever. So now that we're done with that, we are going to top it with some cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like. You can use mozzarella. You can add some Parmesan cheese. Um, this is, well, Sargento is one of my favorite shredded cheeses, but I think this is their fourth state cheddar blend. It's really good. So I'm just going to top it with the cheese. And then we are going to cover this with foil and put it in the oven on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes covered. And then you want to take the foil off and let it cook for about another 10 to 15 minutes uncovered. And of course, we're going to garnish it. I'm going to put a little bit of, um, what do you call it, uh, grated Parmesan cheese on top. And then I'm going to add some uh, fresh parsley flakes. Again, pop that in the oven, 30 minutes, take the, the foil off, let it go for about another 10 to 15 minutes so it can kind of soak up some of the sauce a little bit. And then you're going to let it cool for about mm, 10 minutes before you serve it and you are good to go. Okay, y'all, here we go. Doesn't it look delicious? It's all hot and bubbly and saucy. Yeah, like I said, I like mine a little bit on the saucy side because I just don't want it to be dry. So it came out perfectly. Look, you could serve this with a nice salad on the side, maybe some garlic breadsticks, and you are good to go. Olive Garden, who? Oh. So I hope you enjoyed the recipe. See, it wasn't that hard and look how delicious it is. I mean, you can do it. I feel like a lot of like things with cooking, it seems very intimidating, but when you break it down like this, it's really easy. So look how delicious it came out. I hope you try this recipe. Please let me know if you do. Please let me know what you like to serve with your stuffed shells. And maybe share with me some things that you do differently. Either way, it's bomb. It's a good dish. So thanks for watching the recipe. I'll check you guys out next time.